great like hypothesis character and will he come back and will he be powerful and will he want to be powerful but i think yeah the north is very focused obviously about what's north of the wall but then if you look at king's landing it's very much who's coming after king's landing at the moment it's been so long since we've seen gendry do we remember does gendry know his bloodline is he aware that he is robert baratheon's bastard son i think melisandra um kind of hints at it but doesn't tell him exactly what the deal is with that i think that she obviously uses him for his king's blood but they don't know for sure cool i gotta sneeze again sorry guys <laughs> oh my god okay keep talking <laughs> I, really I think, think i think if you look at it too then at king's landing you got <laughs> oh, okay i'm back sorry okay all right you got Cersei sitting on the Iron Throne without many alliances at all. She kind of seems like a one-woman Definitely band without with many army. Uh, opposition, too, because she eradicated yeah, all of her everybody. opposition at the end of Season 6. But she is also the de facto queen of the Seven Kingdoms, so a lot of people will just automatically defer to her because she sits on the Iron Throne. Yep, that's true. Um, except for... it. Look, oh my god, I gotta do it again. Oh my god, I gotta do it again. <laughs> except for... Oh god... Jamie, who didn't seem too pleased to see his sister sitting on his sister slash lover sitting on the Iron Throne when he returned, um, there's even like this look that he has of, of disapproval or you know anger that his sister is sitting on the throne. So, does Jamie out over in Kings? We've sort of shifted now. We're talking about the central role here um, in King's Landing. Does Jamie live up to his namesake? Do we see the Kingslayer slay another king? Is does he end up killing Cersei this year? Would you put it by him? I no. mean, uh, his children are all dead because of her. Yeah, that's true. Actually, every single all one of them. All of them. But you'll remember, too, more fuel to this fire of this theory is um, remember the vision that, or memory or flashback we got of Cersei when she went to the witch's house with her childhood friend and got the... Um, um, what do you call that? Prophecy. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I got the prophecy from the witch that you will see all three of your children die, and only then will you be murdered. So the the prophecy ends with that she's going to be murdered after her three children are dead. Her three children are dead, so I mean, I I think it goes without say. At some point, Cersei's going to die. Um, Who tells her? Who killed? I think Jamie Lannister kills her. Shout out to my wife, Kendall, has joined. Um, uh, longtime backgrounder in the Hold On To Your Butt show. Fans will know. Um, so, so I think, I think, yeah, I think maybe not this season because this season is, is shaping up to be a big Cersei season um, just based on the trailers and stuff. But I think soon we're going to see Jamie yeah. take care of business there. She's going to kind of, I think, employ the kamikaze. You know, mindset, how many can I take down with me because I'm not going down alone? But I think, you know, it's funny because, you know, her kids by were her moral code for a long time. And she even tried to protect Tommen before he jumped out the window. And that didn't work to advantage. So I think it's kind of game over mentally for her as, like, what is right and wrong. And she's got the mountain by her side. So it's just like, yeah, how many people can I take out before I got to go to? And, John, you mentioned that Jamie is reeling from the death of his three children, too. But to me, Jamie's, like, number one priority has always been Cersei, right? I mean, like, whenever he gets back into King's Landing or something, he goes to Cersei and says, it's just going to be me and you. And there's even a few times in the last few seasons where it looked like Cersei didn't care as much and was sort of, like, pushing him aside and, you know, was, was worried about Joffrey or was worried about somebody else or worried about something else. So it seems like he's sort of been pushed aside and is only there for... Um, Cersei only looks at Jamie when it's convenient, sort of, if that makes sense. It does. And, and you know, I think calling back a couple of seasons ago, I mean, uh, Jamie's relationship with Tyrion, we're going to start to transition over to another group. Uh, Jamie and Tyrion always kind of got along. They, you know, Jamie seemed to like his brother. Cersei did not. So, you know, there's a lot of. There's a lot of built-up tension between these two that I think we're going to see come to a head. If not this season, it's... I mean, obviously, it's got to be the season after because then we're done, right? Uh, oh, but I, no. it's got to come to a head this season because I think it's so pivotal. And I mean, so... it's it. Jamie is most positioned to kill his sister. I don't know if Jamie's going to be the one who's going to do that. Yeah. Um... 
I just feel like for the plot line, it's killer. Like, how does that not happen <laughs> at this yeah. point? And the way, I think there's another said prophecy from a book, you know, piece that says, like, Jamie Lannister and Cersei Lannister will die at the same time. And then there's also a dialogue from Jamie with Edmure at River Run saying, I will do anything I can to get back to her. So it's like, they're going to go down. They might go down together. Ooh, I like that call. That's, yeah. Okay, we're getting into our predictions. Let's let's get back to <laughs> let's, who's, who else is, is seriously aligned with in King's Landing, and who else is in King's Landing at the start of Season 7? It's really pretty minimal, isn't it? I feel like it's really just her, Jamie comes back, and it's all of the people, all the army that they already had in any Lannister family that would already be there. I don't think it's really anybody else not really anybody else there no everybody else is kind of converging on king's landing as they come and then there's the north obviously where a lot of people have converged so it's just it's hard for me and a sort of segue here it's hard for me to picture king's landing being able to stave off an attack from daenerys in that trailer we are reminded that daenerys army consists of three dragons yeah uh how many unsullied Oh, I don't like know, but thousands, thousands, thousands tens, of hundreds, thousands of unsullied soldiers. Um, now, uh, the Greyjoys, well, at least the half rebel faction, the half of the Greyjoys are, are there in, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mer- you, Mira? you got Yara. Uh, Yara, you've got Yara. Yara and Theon Greyjoy with no penis. <laughs> yeah. Good. yeah, you're right. No penis. Sans uh, penis. <laughs> Young Greyjoy, sans penis. But yeah, you've got then you've got the Unsullied, the Dothraki. Oh, the Dothraki. Jesus Can't Christ. Can't forget about them. And at least in the book, she's got like several other mercenary companies that are like following her uh, from where's she coming from? That uh, uh, Marine. Marine at Marine. this point. But I mean, don't forget she she conquered Astapor. She conquered Young Kai. She put down a rebellion. She's got the second sons, Daria Noharis. Jorah Mormont is somewhere wandering the desert with grayscale, probably. Yeah. I mean, as far as sheer numbers, I think I think uh, Daenerys Targaryen is is. Yeah. Well, something some that's interesting to me is like you feel like she's unbeatable, but oh, then God, that's yeah. when everybody falls in this series, right? It's True. Like, yeah, the powerful go. So I. I don't know, and I feel like Euron's hot on their trail, and he's like got revenge on the mind, and that dude seems like a badass, but we don't know anything about him, really. We just know he's an uncle. We know he like came and just killed the guy who was you know, dealing the um, King of the Iron Islands, right, and just took it pretty much, and Yara and Theon were like, well, we gotta go. That's how powerful this dude is, so he's had, on their tail. Had to go through that like really awful like coronation <laughs> where they drown <laughs> right? him. Yeah. Oh, God, Jesus. Um, Getting that yeah, salt water. You're right, though. You're right. Like They feel... Or Daenerys, the the tar- what do you call these guys? The Targaryen army, I guess at this point. I yeah, mean, Daenerys army. Okay, um, the Daenerys dragon and her army. entourage. Yeah, yeah, the entourage. They feel unstoppable, and they have been even in like the most sticky of situations. It just sort of ends with like you know Daenerys walking out of fire naked, and they're good. <laughs> like that's happened, that's happened a few times, right? Um, you you have faith, and they have like one of the most brilliant minds on their side now too, and Tyrion. I mean. Like, Tyrion, who I think maybe in the last two seasons has taken sort of, like, a backseat role. I mean, he was interesting last season, sort of acting as the advisor to Daenerys, and when Daenerys was gone, captured by Dothraki, he was um, the person calling the shots in Marine. Um, so there is, there is, like, some substance to his character still, but ever since he killed his father and, and left King's Landing... Tyrion hasn't really, like, come into his own yet again. You know, he's kind of just, like, this package deal with Varys, kind of like this Laurel and Hardy feel right now to the two of them. So I'm excited to see, like, Tyrion come out and, like, take center stage again, and I hope that we get to see that a bit this season, too. I feel like... Kendall, on a mic. This is... I think this is the first time. This is the first time. Hello. Wow. We gotta, I don't even know how to check your voice. Okay, keep going. This is great. <laughs> I think that Tyrion killing Cersei would be too obvious. I don't think that they would do it. Well, yeah, I agree. I think they're. I think they've they've talked about that. Like, I think where did we hear that a brother was going to kill Cersei or something? Or there was some talk about that somewhere. Yeah. Am I crazy? Okay, it's just another said prophecy. I agree with you. I agree. I don't think we're going to see Tyrion be the one that kills Cersei. I feel um, like it's too obvious because you know that he wants revenge. Yeah, and I, he's going to get it. I think you know the big like payoff for Tyrion's storyline, at least this season, is going to be to storm. King's Landing and be on the other side this time. I mean, remember the last time that Tyrion fought in a battle at King's Landing, he was the hero 
protecting King's Landing. It's how he got his scar um, during the Battle of the Bay. What was that one called? Yeah, Battle of Battle Blackwater. Blackwater. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, you know, the last time I think that he was actually defending the series. So it, I, I bet we'll see, I would even be willing to bet there's like a sort of a, as one of my predictions, there's sort of like a mirror scene to that where now he's the one who's attacking and, you know, the ships are coming in and... So, I, so. Think, I think Tyrion, Tyrion's character is interesting because he's either a bargaining chip for Danny to get with the Lannisters, but she wants to take the throne, not share it, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that Euron is the only other person that Cersei could really even um, partner with as a, an alliance that makes any sense because he's powerful, has ships, and she's got the actual land. But otherwise, I don't. I, you don't feel like she has a lot going on other than what we've heard about how powerful the Lannister army is. And it's also important, uh, here's a little geography lesson. Uh, so we had like a musical jingle to kick this part <laughs> off, like geography with John. So, uh, so where the Targaryen fleet is going, there is no way to get to King's Landing without going past Dorne. Ah, uh, does Dorne have they allied? They... Dorne is with uh, the Tyrells now. Yeah. So, like the big assumption is Who are so dead. All, not all of them. Did, not the Elena. Right. Elena or, uh, is still alive. Elena fled to Dorne she to got... ally with the Sun Spear. I thought she was in there. No, Mm-mm. she was not. So all of a sudden now you've got this massive fleet coming from uh, Marine, who has to sail by Dorne, where you have Elena Tyrell and uh, Illyria Sand. Who these are people who want to see the Lannisters dead. Like, remind me of who these people are. So Elena Tyrell is the grandmother of the former queen of the Sand of Seven Kingdoms, uh, yep. Tommen's wife. Uh, Marjorie. Marjorie. Marjorie, right. Yeah. yeah, who was eviscerated during uh, the explosion during at the High Sept. Yeah, yeah most of the Tyrells die. It's Loras, uh, Marjorie's brother, and then their dad. But Elena isn't in there. She's the grandma who's always awesome. I don't ever seen Super every, sassy. Yeah, every yeah. word she says. Yeah, She's kind of like, a, like she was one a Bond of the Golden girl. Girls. The actress was a Bond girl, actually. Whoa. No Fun way. fact. Oh, that's amazing. Do you remember the movie? No. no. Okay. Cool. Well, that's pretty fantastic. That's awesome, man. So I think, like, when you look at Dorne, it's the Tyrells and, like, the Sand Snakes. And then you see Varys in one of the, maybe it is the finale, in Dorne with them. And then you see Varys back with Danny, and they have ships. But what we don't know is, like, when they come to Dorne, are they going to continue with the rest of the army? So you're right, there's, like, a ton of Tyrells that die in the High Sept, or whatever that building's called. Mm-hmm. And then, but there are still, like, the army and the people that live south of King's Landing, or wherever that is. Yeah. High Garden. It's it's cool, like, get trippy on you guys for a second, but, like, Dorne and the Sand Snakes, like, to me, they're characters and what they're capable of. Like, they literally feel like snakes. They feel like the snake in the grass. Like, Dorne is the wild card. Like, what they do, could, you know, could drastically change the outcome of this war, and it's going to happen when you least expect it. You know, they could switch. Of all of the families that are now getting involved, like, the Dorne kingdom, to me, feels like the one that could easily switch alliances when you least expect it, right? Like, everyone else feels pretty much cemented in their alliance, but Dorne, you know, hates the Lannisters, number one. That's, you know, first and foremost what's driving them. They wouldn't ally with them, but if the tables changed or or flipped and they were able to, you know, get a shot at the throne, that's that's another thing that they've been talking about as a family, right, is is sort of regaining the throne for Dorne. Did they ever hold the throne? It's more of an independent Dorne. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. keep in mind, it's like, so what do the Greyjoys want? The Greyjoys want an independent Iron Islands. Uh, so Dorne is pretty much the same way. What do the Sand Snakes want? They want an independent Dorne. Uh, so it's it's going to be really interesting to see how everybody who has these very different in-game goals yeah. comes together to, at this point, beat the Lannisters. As a transition topic, before we talk about, well, I think we've covered... Not Most everybody. Uh, I want to talk real quick before we get into that. Let's talk about Euron Greyjoy. There we go. Who is that what you're going to say? No, Who's I was. he? Uh, Euron Greyjoy is now the king of the salt throne. The Iron The Iron uncle? Yes. The, yes. The uncle from um, who killed Theon's dad, Theon and... Threw him off a bridge. What's her name again? Yara's Yara. Yara. dad. Uh, threw him off the bridge and went through that like drowning ceremony, coronation ceremony and stuff. So he, I th- like... There's a theory out there, and I base all these theories based off of literally the trailer that we watched right before we started this, <laughs> um, but that he might align with Cersei um, and obviously, you know, fight against 
Yara and Theon. Is that something that you guys see happening, or where do you think Euron's going to end up? So what's what's interesting about that, and they did mention that, and I was thinking the whole time, like, well, 